First things first here, I want to talk about Netflix, specifically this new thing Netflix is trying, and that is potentially getting rid of binge culture. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, what? Huh? Who? What? Why? When? How? Why would they get rid of the binging? That's what put them on the map. Binging is what people really loved about Netflix right off the bat. They loved being able to get all the shows at once, all the episodes at once, without fear of a show being canceled mid-season. But here we are, 11 years, 12 years after the fact of, of Netflix kind of becoming this with their instant streaming service, and especially in 2013 with the creation of like House of Cards and Orange is the New Black and the slew of original content, that now binging culture is almost seemed as detrimental, and I'll talk about that. But the first show they're going to really try this with is not the one you would really assume, and that says Netflix abandons binge model for week-to-week episodes on multiple shows. Now, this caught my eye at first because I thought, oh, damn, we're going to be finally getting rid of binge culture. I have argued that it's actually a detriment to people who are trying to watch uh, these shows and and get in on the conversation. And I will go further into that a little bit later in this. Now, it says here, the new season of The Great British Baking Show is the first program to get the updated weekly treatment. It has usually been released differently in the U.S. and U.K., allowing Netflix to release it all at once. However, this time around, Netflix really wants to keep the suspension of eliminations alive. And that's a key thing to consider. Netflix wants to keep all of this stuff alive. Uh, The suspense, right? They want to build on that momentum, build on the suspense. And the reason why, because it keeps people talking. If you're able to sit down and binge the great British breaking show in one go, which people have, then it's over when it's over and and your friend may not be there just yet. And then that becomes a bit of an awkward thing in regards to having the conversation. Now, it says, if you go looking for the listing for the Great British Breaking Show, you'll see just one episode available for Collection 7. There are future episodes shown, but none of them are going to be able to be watched. Instead, there is a release date for that single episode. Releasing each episode weekly allows viewers to keep up on the reality competition, just as they do shows on cable. And that was actually one of the reasons why Netflix did as well as it did. Because no one would have to deal with that. Because who wants to wait, right? We we are a self-gratification, instant gratification. We're very much self-gratification. But we're an instant gratification society, 100%. And as a result of that, I think it really ultimately harms us. Uh, it, it's created this weird thing where we want to get everything at once. But it, it can become a bit of a detriment. Uh, meaning, what if Netflix releases far too many shows right off the bat, right? What if they release uh, this month alone, September 2019, they're releasing 41 original movies and TV shows this month. They just dropped 10 hours of The Dark Crystal the other day. So that's 10 hours. I'm like on a holiday weekend. I haven't had any time this weekend to sit down and watch any of that yet. And I'm already kind of a little bit anxious about what's going to be coming up next. Am I going to have time to watch it? And that becomes a bit of a problem. Now, The Great British Baking Show isn't the only reality competition series dropping the binge for Netflix. The streaming service released a first look at Rhythm and Flow last week, a rap series uh, featuring uh, T.I., Cardi B., and Chance the Rapper. And that will be released in groups each and every week. So on October 9th, the first four episodes of the series will be released, and those will make up the audition portion of the series. One week later, on October 16th, episodes 5 through 7 will be released. And then the series wraps up on October 23rd, when they release episodes eight through 10. And that is interesting in and of itself because that creates three separate drops, three separate experiences, and three separate water cooler moments. And that is a big thing to consider when it comes to Netflix. It really, really, really is. Because this is an opinion piece I found on Market Watch that I think really kind of talks about the problem with Netflix right now. Saying its content strategy isn't working. So expect even more drops in stock. Now, Netflix has a higher stock than Disney. And it was, it was shown as like a really solid bet for a long time, but they are taking some hits. But here's what they say. They say huge new content spending is not adding enough subscribers. And that's actually something really worth looking into because when you have uh, Netflix, which is canceling shows usually after season three, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the shows become expensive and they're not really pulling in new subscribers. It's one of the reasons why I think they canceled the OA because when they canceled the OA, it had a lot to do with the two-year gap in between seasons. And the creators of that show had to have talked about having a five-season trajectory, a five-season arc for a show that's going to take, what, 10 years? 
that's not in Netflix's purview to keep that around. So instead of fixing the problem by curating better content, they're literally throwing 13 billion on it last year, 2018. This year is 15 billion. Now it says with 85% of that spending earmarked for its originals, for that much money, it should be more than just on track to have originals be the majority of viewing in every category. The company acknowledged in the most recent quarter that its original content hasn't driven enough growth. From the second quarter's investor letter, we think Q2's content slate drove less growth in paid net ads than we anticipated. And that's a thing. But they also like to argue that uh, when they drop uh, kind of establishment content, right? When they drop content that's from like NBC, Disney, Sony, Universal, whatever, they notice that there's a rise in watching of a Netflix original content. Yeah, that makes sense. When people go looking for something that's there and it's not there, they might find something else that suits their interest. Anyway, rather than acknowledge the limitations of the strategy, however, Netflix appears determined to throw more money at the problem. Netflix hasn't given a specific content budget for 2019, but it exceeds content costs to continue growing at a similar trajectory, which would put the company on pace to spend 17 billion. I was wrong. I said 15 billion, 17 and a half billion is what it's estimated to be spending on Netflix this year. That's insane. 17 and a half billion dollars. And they're looking to lose approximately 15% of clients, customers here in the United States, North America, when Disney plus drops, because Disney plus is going to undercut them on the cost and they've got the money to do it. But when I talk about why Netflix should potentially end binge culture, I kind of go to this stranger things. I adore stranger things. I love stranger things. I've got both seasons of Blu-ray of this. And I'll be buying the third season when it comes out too, because I love it this much. But there's a problem. Stranger Things season three dropped July 4th, came out midnight on the 4th. Very kind of weird day to do, but I understand it. All eight episodes dropped and it was a very good, concise, condensed season as compared to the season before it, which ran a little bit long in the tooth. Episode seven, I'm talking to you. But people binged it. They binged the show. They got it done. And then it was, it was done over with people weren't talking about it because it, for one, it wasn't new and two, all the diehards already watched it. So there's really nothing there to continue talking about. There's nothing there to continue really discussing. Yeah. There's a cliffhanger at the end and I still need to do more of a deeper dive video on that, but that's what I'm talking about here is the culture of binging is actually destroying the culture of longevity. Yeah, people watch these shows, which ultimately is what matters. But if it's not driving subscriptions, never mind Netflix's increased cost over the last couple of years and it's it's looming loss of subscribers, that's a problem. So at the end of the day, Netflix really does need to sort itself out. And I've talked about this before in regards to them reaching out to influencers, right? Them, them working with more people, them getting... Uh, early review codes out to people who have audiences who can watch and discuss. And then, yes, release week by week. So then, look, what I'm referring to here mostly, and you may not agree with me and that's fine. What I'm talking about is like a symbiotic relationship because someone like me who's got an audience, so you're watching me right now. If I'm watching, let's say, Dark Crystal, you know, Age of Resistance, and it's week to week, I can get hype week to week and, and cover it week to week and talk to you on a smaller, more bite-sized scale week to week versus asking you, hey, did you invest 10 hours of your life this weekend to watch the show? I did, and I wanna talk about it, but maybe you didn't get a chance to do that yet. So then it feels like it ostracizes you from the conversation. Or you kinda wanna add it to your back catalog of things to watch, but if Netflix is dropping so much content, and never mind just that, like there's so many other outlets you might find yourself getting lost in the shuffle of shows you want to keep up with. And this is a constant problem. If they were able to scale it back, then maybe I could talk about it week by week. We could get excited together week for week. And then we could go on that journey together as fans of this content rather than just kind of splooge it all out at once and then be done with it. And that's, that's my biggest argument when it comes to Netflix is that is where I find themselves at this point, having pushed out so much stuff that they've almost isolated themselves and their fan base. Because when you go to Netflix and you go, oh, I don't know what I want to watch, and you start thumbing through, trying to find something, and you spend 20, 30 minutes just coasting through the, memo, through, through the menu, 
And then at the end of the day, you end up not watching anything you want to watch, but you go and you watch like the office or something because it's comfortable, it's cozy, it's familiar, and you don't have to think about it. Netflix is doing themselves a disservice by instead of curating more quality content, by just dumping a lot of it every single month and kind of hoping something sticks and becomes the next Stranger Things. I think what made Stranger Things a phenomenon, similar to what made Game of Thrones a phenomenon, is kind of in a very odd place right now. And and just dumping money on the problem isn't going to fix it. But by maybe creating suspense, creating a little bit of a weight, you know, and they've done this kind of where they did like the first half of Kimmy Schmidt, the first like six episodes and then like the last six episodes. But the, and that's a bit of a problem because they dumped the first six and then it's like six months later is the is the last six rather than if you just would have done week to week, it would have already been over in half that time. You know, because I, I watched the first half of Kimmy Schmidt season four and I'm still working on on the last half because there wasn't a rush to finish it. And then again, no one I know was talking about it. So I had no one to talk about it with. Pop culture, pop entertainment requires that exponentially requires that. And Netflix is losing that fight time and time again. And I really do hope that they fix it. I definitely want to know what you guys have to say about this. So let me know down in the comments below or head on over here to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash three buck theater and get in on the action. Or if you want to catch a story like this live and ask me questions live and call in live Hollywood after dark Monday through Thursday, 11 p.m. PST right here on the channel. It's a great place to come and hang out, talk about the movies and all the crazy stuff with it. Or if you want to go a step further and really help support the channel, patreon.com is probably the best way right now. YouTube is messing with so many channels. So many people are, are suffering right now. So if you got a dollar per month, help the channel grow. And I really appreciate it. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Have yourself a great day and peace out.